views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Angel Healing House Radio. My name is Claire Candy Hoff. Through my business, Angel Healing House, which can be found at angelhealinghouse.com. I'm a writer and an author, an international radio host, a Reiki master teacher, and an angel practitioner. My inspirational books entitled Angels of Faith and One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness and my autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk-In, are based on my recollections of our life in spirit, and they help us to remember our divine, eternal natures. Through Angel Healing House, I help people to let go of sadness, anger, bitterness, resentment, and regret that has kept them locked in the prison of the past, and I help them to let go of worry, stress, and control which has kept them focused on an imagined future. And once they are no longer living in the past or the future, they can start to live in the present moment, which is the only place that they can experience synchronicities, miracles, and magic. As an angel practitioner, I help people to see their lives from a higher perspective with the help of an extraordinary group of angels who call themselves the Posse of Angels. Just like my angelic family, the Posse of Angels, I'm very excited to take some of your calls for that free angel advice. You can call into the show on 1-800-930-2819. But before we get to those callers... Welcome, everyone, to Angel Healing House Radio with myself, Claire Candy Hoff, and my wonderful angelic family, the Posse of Angels. Also, welcome to Angel Healing House Radio slash TV as we are on Facebook Live TV. To access that and to watch the show as well as listen, you can go to the Transformation Talk Radio Facebook page. And you can watch it live there. Um, all the archives of, on, of the show are on the Transformation Talk Radio host page of Angel Healing House Radio. And um, you also can watch the replays of all the shows on Epic Living TV. So I'd like to start the show off with an absolutely beautiful review I received for my book, One True Home. Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness. And this uh, writer writes, Mrs. Hoff is a beautiful writer who weaves a spell of lifetime after lifetime that is so clear and poignant. It's interspersed with the memories of heaven that will leave you with tears in your eyes. Throughout this compelling tale that I literally could not stop reading, I felt the spiritual energy of truth of oneness, and of love. I was inspired, and I was educated, and I was entertained. This book is a book that will comfort and help many, many people. And that uh, review comes from S. Myers. Thank you so much for that. Just a reminder that my book, Angels, uh, sorry, One True Home, Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness, is about my five most important past lives, and they were the most important to me because my soul grew the most spiritually. And it's not just about those past lives. It's the lives that I lived in between those lives uh, and uh, my journey home to have my reunion with those who have crossed over, my my beloved family in spirit, Um, also uh, going through my life's review and, uh, and going 
to um, the Akashic Records to go over my uh, contract and my book of life with the Etheric Council. And uh, as people read this book, they start to remember that they've done this before and they start to remember their own connection to their one true home in heaven. The book, as with all my books, can be um, uh, purchased on my website, which is angelhealinghouse.com, and it also can be purchased on Amazon. <clears throat> I did want to start off with another letter that I received, um, and this one is uh, is in praise for my podcasts. Uh, this person writes, Dear Candy, thank you for your podcasts. I discovered them while I was going through a bad period of my life. I'm trying to get rid of past hurts and not worry about the future so I can live, as you say, in the nanosecond of the now. I was a special education teacher working at a school for inner city youth, many of who have been kicked out of other schools. I would get in my car, I would burst into tears, I'd cry all the way to work, and then cry more when I got to school. I was applying for jobs. Although I got some interviews, but no job offers, I was a real mess. I listened to several of your podcasts where you suggested to people to do the mantra of thanking the universe for the great job that they have. And thank the universe where you work with fun people. Thank you for being financially remunerated for my expertise, etc. I wrote this on a three by five card and I said it as often as I could. I, I said it in the bathroom. I said it all over the place in my car. I made peace with myself that I could not help students who did not want to help themselves. After doing this for a while, something amazing happened. I applied for several jobs and got calls to interview for all three. I was also surprised, <clears throat> excuse me, that I got an interview because this particular one, this school district was very, very difficult for outsiders to get into. Two days later, the principal called to offer me the position. I was absolutely stunned and a little hesitant to accept the position. I met the principal today and I got good vibes. The pay is double what I currently make. The benefits are great and there are many opportunities for professional development and growth. I just felt that I needed to let you and the posse of angels know that something very positive and great has occurred in the universe because of you and your show. I will continue to listen to your podcasts and promote them to my friends. Thank you and the posse of angels for coming into my universe. And that's for Monica. So if you have it in your heart that you would love something, then thank the universe as if it's already happened. Because as soon as we have a thought, an intention, a wish, a prayer, it appears instantly instantly in our one true home of heaven um, and our vibrational frequency just has to match that across the veil and <clears throat> gratitude and appreciation are two of the highest forms of energetic healing um, and connection to the universe so thank the universe as if whatever you desire in your heart has already come about well all i can say is wow because last week's topic, angel signs, was so popular. I received many emails saying how much people enjoyed the topic and they'd like to have more information on how they can discern their own angel signs. So here we go with angel signs part two. In last week's program, we spoke about angel signs and how important it is, if you want to discern them, to live only in the present moment, as that's the only place that we can discern the signs from the angels. Now, the posse of angels are saying that living in the moment is only possible if we've cleared and cleansed all of our anger, our sadness, our bitterness, resentment, regret, judgment, forgiveness, defensiveness, criticism, um, 
all of any any of that because once we clear that we no longer allow ourselves to be triggered and reactive and the only reason we would be triggered and reactive is because that is still pushing our buttons from something that we haven't cleared in the past and they also wish us to stop worrying stop stressing and stop controlling as this puts you in the future and not in the present moment, which is the only moment we can discern those signs in. Now, last week we touched on those amazing signs that the angels send us through animals and <clears throat> they have a few more animals that they wanna present us with. Did you know that squirrels are the sign of gathering? You know, seeing a squirrel might be a sign of storing your energy Maybe you're trying to do too much. You know, perhaps it could mean that uh, you need to gather more information to prepare for the future. This could see one maybe investigating new courses or learning a new skill to store more knowledge on a subject in order to further your certification. Squirrels also often have been an indication uh, to honor one's future, and it's telling us to get ready for change is coming. You know, squirrels store their acorn acorns for the winter, so they are prepared. With their playfulness and their, their playful natures, squirrel could show us that we have been perhaps behind the computer for too long, and we need to get out and just play more. Okay, another animal sign, great sign, is a lizard. If a lizard appears in our world, then it means pay attention to your dreams. It may be telling you to take particular note of the messages in your dreams. It also might be an indicator to honor your dreams by putting more focus on creating movement and passionately taking inspired action toward the manifestation of those dreams. And even though we recoil and we run away from snakes, when we see a snake, it's one of the strongest indicators that we are transmuting something in our life. Just like the snake sheds its skin to begin anew, snake could be telling us to transmute our thoughts, our words, our actions, and our desires to open and make more space for the new to come in. And th in this way, we will allow ourselves to be reborn. And you know, while animals and insects do convey very strong messages for us, there are many other ways that the angels convey messages through our intuition, our gut feelings, and those things that catch our attention. Now, I've spoken in the past about angel signs and messages and, uh, and, and this is a great, um, um, a great example of what happened to me this past week. You know, most of the time, people do not recognize angel signs because they are too busy, in quotes, doing their expected agenda. Just last week, I was to meet a friend at a restaurant at a very, very busy mall, and the car park was full. And as I was thanking the posse of angels for organize, uh, organizing a, sp a parking space for me, I spotted a lady and she was holding the hand of a little girl who was holding a balloon and they were skipping and uh, not they were, but the little girl was skipping as, sh as they walked to the mall. Now they weren't walking to the car park so that I perhaps could follow them and to get their space they were already past the car park and they were walking to the mall. Even though I was a few minutes late to meet my friend, I stopped the car and I watched this free, joyful little girl skipping along and I felt so happy. In that moment that I paused, I heard a car engine turn over and the car that I had stopped just in front of me started to pull out. If I had not paused to uh, experience the joy of that skipping girl, then the line of cars behind me would have taken the space. 
thanking the angels, I smiled at the ease and grace of life working out, which could be as simple as following my joy, waiting a few extra moments to watch a little girl skip along with a balloon. Now, the posse of angels is emphasizing that when a sign is presented to you, you don't have to try to figure it out, but go with your joy. Go with your intuition. Go with your gut feelings. Go with, with what excites you. In this case, it was following a little girl with my eyes and experiencing her joy. I mentioned in my last week's program that the angels do send us signs through the songs that we hear. A listener was trying to decide as to whether she was going to uh, accept a job offer in New York or back in her hometown of Chicago. After weeks of worrying and sleepless nights, and she still couldn't decide, she uh, listened to uh, one of my programs, one of my podcasts, and she decided to allow the angels to send her signs and that she was going to uh, be presented uh, easily and able to discern those signs on where she should, um, or where, not she should, but what would be of most benefit to her when it came to choosing one of these job positions. That weekend, her parents were having a garage sale, and she, as she pulled up, she heard the song, Chicago, Chicago, that toddle in town. It was sung by Frank Sinatra, and it was sung much better than I just sang it. Her father was selling his old record collection and had set up the old record player in the yard and was playing some of his records to attract interest and attention. On hearing the lyrics about Chicago, she received goosebumps and shivers. At the end of the day, she stopped off to get a coffee for the drive home. As she walked into the shop, she heard the song, Wishing You Were Here by, of all bands, Chicago. Again, she received shivers and goosebumps. After these two signs, she did not need any more signs and took the Chicago position. And you know what? Her life fell easily into place. She easily found a wonderful, inexpensive place to live. She connected with helpful, like-minded people, and she loved her new job position. Now, personally, the number of times over the past 14 years since my angelic walk-in experience that I've turned on the radio or I've walked into a store and heard angel songs have been countless. You know, whether I hear Heaven is Missing an Angel by Tavares, uh, She Talks to Angels by the Black Crows, Earth Angel by the Penguins, You Are My Special Angel by Bobby Vinton, Angel by Sarah McLaughlin, Angels by Robbie Williams. These are just a few that I continually hear. Why? Well, because my number one priority is shining my angelic presence on the planet and connecting others to their own divine eternal natures. So pay particular attention to what songs appear in your reality and see if you can discern what message that they hold for you. You know, the more that we no longer are living in the past and not living in the future, and living only in the present moment, life can take on an appearance of an enchanted, interactive treasure map, and it's constantly changing and presenting us, us with clues to confirm that we are on the right path, and our angels give us hints about some aspect of our life. For instance, over the past couple of years, I have been told by others, and also the posse of angels, and many friends who are clairvoyant that I'll be stepping up to a much more global platform, not only in radio, but also in TV. So I truly was not surprised when I sat down at a cafe and I was writing on my laptop. And a few minutes later, two young women sat down next to me and they began to have a rather loud animated conversation on how they were both hired to work 
at CBS television. You know, when I was finished and I left the cafe, I pulled out of my parking spot and I, I just laughed out loud as the license plate in the front of me spelled out Y-O-U-T-V. UTV. It was only four weeks ago that I received a phone call from Transformation Talk Radio, actually an email, asking me, <clears throat> excuse me, if I would like to position my radio show on Facebook Live TV. And the posse of angels are saying, you ain't seen nothing yet. But all I have to do is to remain present and thank God for my wonderful opportunities and connections to take my message out to a wider audience, including TV, and then see what manifests for me. Another way that angels send us messages is through the numbers that we see. Okay, seeing a number one means that the angels are trying to convey to us that there's going to be some kind of new beginning in our life, something Something will start afresh for us. Um, number one can also mean taking on a role of leadership. It could mean independence or being praised for one's singular efforts in one's job. Number two, the twos indicate balance in our lives. Uh, they indicate pairing. Uh, this pairing could be of all kinds of natures. It could be partnering on a romantic level. It could also mean unions and partnering with business partners. Uh, there might be a coupling of a committed relationship or marriage. It also brings messages of compromise so that things can flow to bring about a resolution. Or a two can indicate having to make a decision between two, um, two uh, important choices. Two also deals with, argue, with sorry, agreements made with others and communication of all types. Now let's go to the number three, which is a very magical number. Wherever two or more are gathered in my name, miracles happen. Number three is uh, the number of fertility, of joy, of growth. Out of that two pairing comes the three. And it also um, denotes completeness. It can actually be a sign that the projects that you have been working on and partnering, partnering with either yourself or somebody else in the two is going to come to full circle and it will bear fruit. The number three is the manifestation of the joy of creation. You have a man, a woman, a mother, a father, and then the miracle of a baby. Number four brings the message of foundation, of security, of stability, of groundedness. The messages from an abundance of fours might signify that one needs to get grounded. They need to put down roots. Maybe think about your work ethic. Have you been dependable or have you let others toe the line instead of you? The messages around the number fives is one of change, of challenge, and, uh, and different experiences. You know, many times people don't like the number five because um, it appears with challenges, but it is a great number because it's there to help us grow. Number five is definitely deals with motion and can be a great time of change, or it could simply mean that we're going to be changing and moving and going on a trip somewhere besides our normal routine. <clears throat> Excuse me. When fives are appearing in your life, be on the lookout for change, for travel. Possibly with change could be coming a new adventure. Sixes are the number of balance, of diplomacy. Sevens are I always call sevens, um, I was born in the seventh, a lucky number. Uh, seven is the number of doing God's work, of spirituality, of turning inward, of sacredness. Uh, there's a lot of meaning, esoteric meaning, be be behind that number seven. Number eights bring um, messages concerning business, success, abundance, wealth, and prosperity. And nines, just like the gestation of a baby, nine is 
the message of attainment, of accomplishment, of completion. And one last example out of the countless signs that I've received. I remember when Pete and I first arrived in the States and money was very tight for us. This was back in 2008. I had just deposited Pete's paycheck in the bank. And when I looked at our bank balance, I saw that the savings at that stage were very, very meager. In that moment, I decided that my feelings of richness did not depend on a number that represented my bank account. So on my walk home, I said out loud, I'm rich, I'm wealthy, and I'm abundant. And I closed my eyes and I felt how truly rich I was. Suddenly, I felt the wind pick up around me and I opened my eyes and I saw something, some paper that was skimming the, uh, the ground and it was floating towards me on the sidewalk. And as it got closer to me, I saw that it was money. And when I bent down to pick it up, I gasped as I saw that it was a $50 bill. Amazing what can happen when we release all our expectations and attachments to how the angels respond and as to what signs they send us for our greatest benefit and the greatest good of all concerned. You are listening to me, Claire Candy Hoff, on Angel Healing House Radio. You might be watching the show live on the Transformation Talk Radio Facebook page as we're live on Facebook Live TV. You might be watching this on the replay or listening to it on the archive shows on my host page, Angel Healing House Radio and Transformation Talk Radio. When we come back from this short break, we'll be taking some calls for those free angel readings. So I'll see you soon. you discovered the remarkable books at angelhealinghouse.com? Author Claire Candy Hoff has channeled rare books of inspiration and insight. Angels of Faith is an inspiring story of healing, comfort, and hope that reminds us that death is not to be feared, but embraced with joy. One True Home Behind the Veil of Forgetfulness takes readers on a roller coaster ride through Angel Ariel's five most important lives on Earth, as well as her experiences in the afterlife, and helps us remember our own journey across the veil. And Claire Candy's autobiography, I Am an Angelic Walk In, which details the 2003 soul exchange that took place when Claire Candy walked out of her body and Angel Ariel walked in, creating heaven on Earth for herself and others. To find out more about these wonderful books, visit angelhealinghouse.com today. To see your life from an angel's perspective, book a personal consultation with Claire Candy Hoff, angelic walk-in angel Ariel at Angel Healing House. Candy provides intuitive counseling, Reiki, and angel readings in person in Los Angeles or nationally and internationally via phone or Skype. She will channel the practical tools you need to transform your life. Call now, 831-277-3716, or visit angelhealinghouse.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Angel Healing House Radio with myself, Claire Candy Hoff, and, of course, my wonderful angelic family, the Posse of Angels. We've been talking about angel signs and the easy ways that we can discern them. Let's go to our callers and see if they follow angel signs. Our first caller is Deborah from Missouri. Deborah, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi. Uh, Thank hi. you for taking my call. You're very welcome. How are you today? And do you follow the signs of the angels? I I do my best. Let's just say <laughs> that. There's times I I catch them and sometimes I don't. <laughs> well, well, you know, the great thing about the angels is they, if if we do miss those signs, they will send them in various ways 
So and uh, sometimes when I, uh, in the in the beginning when I wasn't uh, so um, you know uh, I couldn't easily discern the signs of the angels. Sometimes they would put it right at my feet so that I would trip over it or right smack in front of my face, and then I would think, oh yeah, I got that. I I uh, now I understand what that person or that sign was trying to tell me before. But if we miss it, it'll always come around again. So. What is your question today, Deborah? What do the angels want to tell me? Is this um, in in any specific areas of your life? Um, Using my psychic gifts. Okay. All right. While I'm shuffling, (laughs) the posse of angels are saying, dear, dear Deborah, You can't be any more spiritual than you are, okay? They're saying uh, you're Mm -hmm. a spiritual being having a human experience, so stop trying to be more psychic. They're saying just allow yourself, um, allow yourself to open, open to the divine gifts that you have within yourself and to use them in a way that is fun and playful and excites you. Now, for some, that could mean starting your own radio program and having free readings. For others, it could be studying Reiki and having a healing practice. For others, um, you know, uh, it, 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 it could take on the guise, it could, it, you know, writing a book about uh, psychic awareness, starting a blog. Um, it doesn't really matter how we uh, bring forth our psychic abilities, and everybody's psychic. Um, the, right. the, most, the most important thing that they're stressing for you, Deborah, is to make it individual. Make it, make it something that, uh, you know, is you, is that, and, and it, it excites you, and uh, you're enthusiastic about doing it. Because whatever it is, um, a lot of people think about this and they do it for money and if we're doing it solely for the money then uh after a while it's going to peter out because it's not going to excite us it's we're not going to be enthusiastic and and um and you know um there's a spark inside of us to take inspired action to keep doing it um if we're not passionate about it so i think that's the most important thing that the posse of angels want you to know about uh, your psychic abilities um, and and definitely allow yourself to translate into doing something with them that is fun. Um, you could even design your own angel cards, you know, and, uh, and mm-hmm. then do readings with them and then sell them and, you know, um, but, uh, but make sure it has your own energy on it. Let's go to the cards. Oh, Wonderful. Major Arcana card. The first card we got is the, uh, the chariot. And the chariot is a card of movement. So this is definitely confirmation of making movement towards uh, translating your psychic abilities into something that's fun and playful. But this is also a card of recognition. This is also a card of being rewarded and, if you want, promoted or <clears throat> mainly recognized for your psychic abilities. You could write a book and go on TV and um, uh, TV and radio interviews um, and, uh, and share your psychic awareness in that regard. Uh, the next card that's coming out for you is the Three of Cups. And this is a, cup, uh, a card of celebration, of celebrating something that you passionately bring forth and you put your psychic energies into and your, your and your psychic knowledge and your spiritual knowledge and the third one is the uh, the nine of swords um, and the nine of swords is basically that card of um, um, of worrying too much worrying too much about um, how the how and the when um, to employ your psychic awareness instead of being like a child and just getting excited about creating something that is uniquely your own um, and then you 
then you um, honor and value and respect the divine inside of you, these beautiful psychic gifts that you've been given, and then you'll share it with others. So I hope that's been helpful for you, Deborah. Yes, yeah, definitely. And you mentioned something about sometimes you'd get signs, but you didn't know what the information was. I've gone through that too. Oh, and they're saying, they're saying that, Maybe that if you didn't see the sign, that not to worry about it, not to worry about it. Just then you can ask your angels, can, um, I haven't received a sign yet about X, Y, Z, whatever it is. Could you please send me the sign, which is more clear? Maybe you didn't receive the sign because it's not the right timing. It's not divine timing. Oh, no, that's not what I said. I it must have kicked out. What I said was, I, re, I I get a message, but sometimes I don't understand what the message means. Oh, you don't understand what the message is. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah. then of course, yeah. then you can then you can ask then you can ask the angels uh, for them to uh, be a little bit more clear about it. You know, okay. don't be so don't be so subtle. You know, you don't want to be hit in the head. But, you know, you don't want to be physically hurt with them hitting you over the head. Right. But really, really make right. it more clear so that I will not miss it. I mean, you know, when this, this girl couldn't decide about Chicago or New York, and then she heard the, the songs about Chicago and the band Chicago, and, and then she got those shivers and those goosebumps. You know, she knew that that was a sign to step mm -hmm. forward to Chicago. Now, some of the signs may not be that blatantly obvious, but you can ask for clarification on the signs and for them to make them more clear for you. So, so I think that'll be helpful okay. for you, Deborah. Awesome. Okay. Yes, take, I do too. <laughs> okay. Take care and have an absolutely beautiful day. Thank you very day. much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Deborah. And that goes for all of us, you know, just because um, two things that, uh, uh, before we take our next caller, two things that I want everyone to know is that just because you've uh, been given a sign and perhaps have missed it, you know, because we all live busy lives and we all have things to do, um, the angels will send that sign to you again. And um, if perhaps uh, you get a sign and you do not understand it um, and it's perplexing to you, then you can ask the angels for more clarity. You know, I received this and my gut is telling me that this is a sign Please send me uh, more clarification around this so that I can really discern the signs and I can take inspired action on it. So let's go to our next caller. Let's go to Stephanie in New York. Stephanie, you're on the line with Angel Healing House Radio slash TV with myself, Claire Candy Hoff. How are you today, Stephanie? I'm good. How are you? Very well, can thank you. Hear me? you. Yes, I can. Have you received any angel signs of late? Um, I'm not sure. I um, So I'm in a study group uh, for my uh, wellness coaching course. Mm -hmm. And some people, there's uh, someone in my course lives in Asheville, North Carolina. And she's doing a launch already, actually, for her business this weekend. And then someone else in our group who lives in Virginia messaged me last week and thought it would be fun if uh, we went to that. So she invited me to come to Virginia, and then she said she would drive, which is like a seven-hour drive. Um, and I hesitated, and I'm not sure why. And then I was, like, thinking, and they're both places I would love to go to. And I think right. it would be fun, but something was, like, holding me back. And then I was looking around last night at buses versus planes versus uh, trains. And, you know, a lot of it seems expensive. And then I was getting a funny feeling in my stomach on and off, but I wasn't sure if that was because of what I ate or if that was a message. <laughs> and then... This morning on the radio, I happened, I heard of an ad about um, Antrax Super Savers. But when I looked that up, it, so I thought that was a sign, but then when I looked it up, it looks like you need to do it two weeks in advance, but their launch is actually this weekend. So, you know, I don't know. And I don't know why, for some reason, this decision is so scary or stressful for me. And I don't know if it'd be too much. Um, 
too much travel, it could be exhausting, or if it's scary, like you well, know, spending well, five days yeah. with someone I don't know that well. I was, well, was going to I was going to jump in here. Ste- I was going to jump in here, Stephanie, and say that well, the good part about going by car is that uh, you know you can you can make uh, multiple stops. You know, you're not held to uh, just, uh, you know, staying in one one place for a while and you can stretch your legs and you can take coffee breaks or whatever and, you know, for snacks and all different kinds of things and just, you know, uh, and then and then get back in the car. What one of the things that struck me when you were speaking is um, go back to the girl in uh, North Carolina and you said she's already started a launch. Yeah, her her wife or partner um, actually graduated, be- you know, just before we started the program. So I think the two of them are doing something together. So they're, said- they're kind of revealing their business. They're having a little party um, to try to get clients. And it's like a celebration of their business that they're okay. beginning now. Well, yeah, uh, which which um, I I don't know if uh, you, your your words are breaking up. Also, the connection's not very good. But one of the things um, was that uh, you know, um, um, are you could be feeling since you know she's doing a launch or that she's already starting to get clients or all of that, uh, you could be feeling. Um, you know, um, maybe some jealousy or or some competition, not jealousy, some competition there. Uh, like, you know, uh, like she's doing this and I'm not there yet. So I don't know if that resonates with you. Like you would, um, you would like, you would like, it. yeah, you would like to be on your path yeah. already. You know, you're thinking back, perhaps you were held back because of your illness. You were thinking perhaps you would, but the, the, the posse of angels really truly want you to know that um, you are exactly where you're meant to be. And everybody, everybody, there is no competition whatsoever. Um, she's where she needs to be and you are where you need to be. So one of these things that is making you hesitate is this feeling of uh, this competition and that, you know, that you would want to be where she is already with the client. Um, but, um, but truly, um, you you were worried about um, the money, and then this uh, person offered you uh, this free trip, um, and the oh, Posse no, of Angels no, no. are oh. uh, the one in the car. She's offering to drive from Virginia, yeah, but for yes. them to get to Virginia, it's, uh, it, it could be like $500. It depends how I go. To... to, to, to um, to go down to North Carolina? Well, to go to Virginia, if I fly or if I take the, the Amtrak even is expensive or there's a bus, but that's like five hours. And I think the train is eight hours. Um, so that's what I meant by there being a lot of travel just to get to Virginia. Even. Right. And well, then we'd be spending well, the night in a, ho- a hotel in Asheville. So all of that. Right. Well, the posse of the posse of angels are saying that um, uh, there's um, they're seeing that the the trip will be safe, uh, the trip will be fun. Um, the underlying feeling that they picked up was one of competition, um, and uh, and and to go down there. So let's go to the cards and see what comes out. Um, okay. And do they have a suggestion of how to get to Virginia? I'm sorry, you broke up. What was that? Oh, do they have a suggestion on how to get to Virginia, if I should do the bus or the train or fly? Oh, well, they're saying they're saying uh, the car. I don't know why you wouldn't do the car. Well, I can't. I mean, I don't have a car that would drive me to Virginia now. My boyfriend doesn't want to take time off. My friend will drive. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, you keep Virginia. Okay. Well, there. Uh, I'm sorry, oh, Stephanie. Sorry. It's a very, very bad connection. I'm only getting about a, uh, two or three words. Let's go to the uh, Is this and see. What, that's a little bit better. Um, so they're saying yes yeah. to so my, to my, take the offer of the car, and then you're asking. What was the second part you were asking? How I should get to the person with the car because she's in near DC and I'm in New York. 
if I should take a bus or the train or fly to her first. And okay, then would they're drive saying, the, okay, from there, from there, they're saying the, the bus. From there, they're saying a bus. But um, okay. um, I, would, I would take this opportunity to go and to have fun. Certainly in the last year, because of your illness, you have been inside for a long time. And, and then see this as a new adventure. Uh, the first part of the card, uh, the reading, is the hermit. Yes, this is confirmation that you have been inside for a very long time, and you do need to get out. You do need to get out and meet people. And uh, I think this would be very helpful for your, uh, for your energies. The next one is the Ten of Cups. Um, this, is, this is meeting new people meeting new people and being um, excited to engage with life more. And, uh, and the next card that's coming out for you is the Seven of Pentacles. And this is one of uh, you have um, planted the seeds. And now because you'll be going out and engaging with the world, you'll be seeing and experiencing new ways how they can blossom. I've got to take the next caller. I hope that's been Thank helpful you. for you, Stephanie. It's been very helpful. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye bye. And think and and think about that, everyone. You know, if uh, if the angels are sending us a sign, you know, we've perhaps asked how we can engage more in life. And then if we're getting um, a, a feeling like, oh well, I don't, uh, something's telling me not to step forward. It could be that it's an underlying fear that we have, maybe one of competition, one of not being. I don't know, not being good enough or not, not having achieved enough. But all we need to do is to settle in to um, having fun and playing and being excited. Next caller, let's go to Beth in Ventura. Beth, you're on the line with Claire Candy Hoff and Angel Healing House Radio. Hello, Candy. How are you, sweetie? Hi, Beth. How are you? Oh, good. How are you? I am really well today. And have you been following angel signs? Yes, I make a concerted effort to follow angel signs. My question, though, today is I spoke to someone yesterday, and they told me that the reason I have my illness, this um, issue with my sinuses and gut, is because I had an entity attached to me, my sister-in-law was running havoc on me and I just want to know what the angels say. I'm, I'm sorry, the last, part, yeah, the last part of your question broke up. You said you just wanted to, uh, in reference to your sinus and gut, you wanted to? Oh, I was told that there's an entity that's been, a, my sister-in-law, my sister-in-law who passed away has been re wreaking havoc on me and playing with me and causing me to stay um, in my um, in my senses, sinuses to be messed up, and I just want to know what the angels have to say about that. They are oh, okay. <laughs> They're saying that this the last part of your healing with your sinus and gut. Uh, so much of our um, uh, the sinus and also the gut. Particularly with you, I can I can feel with the with the stomach is the seat of our relationships. And you did bring up your beautiful sister in spirit, Ina. Um, if there's no, anything, if if there's it's anything that, sorry, what? It was my sister-in-law. My sister-in-law, not my sister. My my sister-in-law. Oh, your sister-in-law, your sister-in-law. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, and um, once again, your sister-in-law, um, because this, the, I, I only heard every third or fourth word. I'm very sorry. The connection yeah. is awful today. Um, must, be yeah. under the, um, must be under the influence of the new moon. So, um, <laughs> so, so what... Just give me a few brief words about the uh, your sister-in-law and what would you like to ask? I want to know if she's been messing, if she's been running, um, um, doing stuff to me, so preventing me from getting better because of all these facilitators I've been working with and all the things I've been doing, nothing's happening. And this woman yesterday told me it's because she's been running havoc on my system. 
Uh, okay, so the 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 most important thing that you the, I only got like every third or fourth word, Beth. But the most important thing out of all of this is that for you to bless, for you to bless this person where they are, for exactly where they're meant to be. That's that's the most wonderful thing that you can do for somebody. Um, I was interviewed uh, this past week and. Um, I said, one of the greatest things that we can do is allow somebody else to walk their spiritual journey because their spiritual journey has nothing to do with us. It has to do with their own paradigm, just their own things that they've either uh, keep uh, because, um, uh, you know, the, out of fear, out of rejection, out of abandonment, out of protecting their heart because it's so... It's, it's so hard to be vulnerable and to make ourselves open. So um, out of all of this, even though I didn't get very much of, of what you were saying, I'm so terribly sorry, the connection is just not, not very good today, um, is that allow that person to walk their journey as they see, see fit. It has nothing to do with you and to bless them for exactly where they are. All right, everyone, you're listening to Angel Healing House Radio with Claire Candy Huff. We're going to take a quick, short break. Thank you for waiting. Glitches today in the communication, uh, in the uh, the connectivity of the uh, of the internet. Um, I was just going to f- pull a few more cards to see uh, what some of the messages are for us this coming week, with us being under the influence of that new moon. Uh, first card coming out for all of us is the Knight of Spring. Da 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 da. <laughs> the Knight of Spring is that card of having ants in our pants, of having. Um, uh, that uh, excited feeling inside of us, movement, travel, moving forward, um, and uh, of things coming in because the nights are all about action, how we can action our dreams and where we put our focus on for many, many years and the seeds we've planted. And now, as for a long time, the Posse of Angels have said to me, summer harvest. Uh, next card that's coming out for us is the emperor. And the emperor is that, uh, that position of being recognized and financially remunerated and promoted for who we are and because we've risen to that, uh, that level. And now we are going to experience the spoils of having done all of that. And last but not least is the Ace of Swords, which is another card around new beginnings for us. So watch the communication, watch the emails, watch the messages, watch the phone calls that come in uh, for people that want to support you, promote you, recognize you for the wonderful work that you've done. And, um, And it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time as we go into August and the, uh, the eclipses that will bring a light to how many, uh, to the ways that how many of us will start to move forward. And that just about wraps the show up for today. I'd like to thank all of the callers who called in. If you weren't able to connect for a free angel reading, uh, don't forget that Angel Healing House Radio airs every week on Transformation Talk Radio at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And until next time, please do allow your radiant light to shine forth and fashion an absolutely beautiful life for yourself. Love and, as always, angel blessings. And I'll speak with you again next week. Take care. Bye.